just, uh, I guess, uh, uh, in, uh, okay, thank you for uh, bringing that up. Okay, hopefully everybody sees that now. So uh, here we are just to, uh, just to run it again, we'll run our module. And uh, if we look at that, we enter guests and we say a nine and it says, sorry. And then we say, oh, we type something uh, uh, that accidentally is a, is a uh, letter. And we get this message that says uh, a valid uh, description of what happened, but, but not very and very instructive to us as programmers, but not exactly uh, you know, helpful to the user who may want to continue on the game because he accidentally typed uh, a erroneous letter. So we said, okay, what can we do to make this uh, a little more friendly? <coughs> well, we say we're gonna, as our programming says, we're gonna take this file and we just did it. We saved, we did a, a save as a file, save as, and we, uh, saved it as uh, our, in my work, uh, iteration seven, okay? So we already did that. Now we say, okay, let's, let's um, uh, change our commentary uh, to match our, uh, uh, what we have here, 26, uh, October, 2021. And at the bottom we're gonna of the commentary, we're going to then just say one more thing. We're gonna say, okay, we're going to uh, um, handle uh, illegal inputs. All right, so and we could do more, but let's do this for right now. So illegal inputs, we're going to uh, do something that tells the user they typed an illegal number and uh, try again. So essentially, uh, the, the thing, if you notice in the, um, the problem went bad is it, it was it got the input, I, it's really, certainly a legal, a legal set of characters, but uh, it's not a legal integer. So what, one does, and this is a very general approach in Python, uh, there's a such thing as try, which essentially says, start something, or try this something, and if something goes wrong, uh, go to what's called the accept section, which we will get to in a second, but it's a clause, so it's indented, everything's indented, and then, Accept, and that says the try is going to try whatever is in this uh, indented section. And if there's something wrong, and it doesn't matter what, but if something's wrong here, it will jump to the accept section. If not, it'll just fall through, and you will do uh, what you uh, hope to do. So then we say, okay, well, what do we do here? Well, let's say. We'll do a print and we'll do a formatted string and we'll say, I don't we could be more, but we'll just say that and uh, we'll do the put that the input uh, and then we'll say something uh, Again, and then of course we'll do a a continue, which says uh, go back to the while the most uh, uh, recent loop, whether it be a while or a four and such, and then try that looping uh, again. So what we'll do is we'll say, oh, I don't understand whatever you, you typed in, and please try again. Sometimes I like to put a space. Uh, doesn't have to be, but I like to put a space there just to remind myself that the flow of control uh, is something other than falling down. 
So, okay, so let's, let's just try this out. So we're gonna go run, uh, run the module, says we must be saved, and we just take a look, quick look up here and say, oh yes, we, we do have a, a new name down there, so we're not gonna destroy our old stuff. And then we come up here and we say, we're gonna enter our guests, and we enter five, legal, uh, oops, that's too low, and then maybe we type Ah, it says, oh, okay, and then it answers again. So um, I guess we should have said like nine and so on. So that looks like uh, it has done what we want. It's uh, if I try something else. Uh, and of course we could do, you know, use a programmer could do whatever sort of, uh, description you want, you could say this is not an, you know, a D is not an integer, blah, blah, please try again, or something like that. Or you could quit. You could, you could uh, put a break here and say, sorry, your input is, uh, you know, I don't understand it. I'm quitting now. See you later. But in this case, what you might often try to do is, as a programmer, is, is make your uh, program or game, in this case, uh, a little bit more forgiving. So in case somebody accidentally types a uh, uh, illegal character, uh, they can, um, you know, you tell them about it and they can just try it again. So this try uh, with whatever you try, and this can be very, uh, we'll show you uh, later on uh, a very, another variation of that theme of, uh, so you, you can try uh, all sorts of things and, uh, if you get a, an exception in this case, uh, you will go to the exception. And you can, have, you can even have, uh, except can be even more general. In this case, anything, uh, any sort of exception uh, is going to come to this except. But there are other ways, uh, other things where you have only certain exceptions do this and other exceptions do that and so on. So anybody uh, want to ask a question about that? Does anybody... Uh, uh, perplexed. That's that's what we had to do to to add uh, to make our iteration going from uh, just handling uh, everything we handled before, but now also handling the situation of um, checking for uh, an illegal uh, input, if you are illegal, something that's not essentially an integer. Anybody have a question? Okay. Uh, okay. Anyway, so that that's uh, the uh, our final iteration on our uh, program. Obviously, there there are things if you want to go on and, and do things in uh, uh, after the class. There are all sorts of things you might think about. Uh, anybody else? Anybody have a a a, a a question about the, or any a suggestion of what what could we do as to make a more robust or more interesting game? You can ask. You can, or you can suggest. I'm all interested. In, um, anybody want to suggest something? Yes. Okay. I don't have any suggestion, but I have a question. Um, if we type the number instead of number one, we type one with letters, it will also not accept uh, our guess, correct? That's right. It, it only accepts uh, uh, it only accepts a string of characters that that Python can convert that string of characters to a legal integer. So okay. uh, now you could make a program. You could make a program that might, uh, uh, that would be an interesting uh, addition, make, an, uh, make a program that allows people to type not only uh, numbers, uh, but, uh, uh, you, know, let, you know, words, all at one, two, three, four, five. Uh, that might be an interesting idea. But yes, this, currently our, our program uh, is restricted to, 
uh, accepting only uh, a string of characters that can be interpreted as uh, by Python as a as an integer. Um, you could certainly, uh, you know, make something uh, that is more powerful. Any other any suggestions as what one do? Uh, I mean, one aspect I've thought about, in fact, I think I have an example of one look. If you look through the exercises, by the way, there are lots of little files that, that occurred to me as, as possibilities. Uh, we didn't cover in class, but uh, you may find it interesting if you just go hunting through there. Uh, I believe in one of the, uh, one of the iterations um, that I put out uh, allows you to, uh, uh, to change the, um, to allow the user to change the high or low uh, limit. In fact, I think maybe it's just high limit. Anybody have a suggestion as to what, what you might do to, to do that? I think it, when, when you ch change, a, uh, in my case, uh, uh, when you uh, ask for a new game, uh, I think I put in a, an option for the user to, uh, to change the uh, maximum. So if they wanted to do this game for the numbers from one to a million, they, they could. You can also add a counter so you can keep track of how many games somebody has Say played. Say that again? You can add a counter so you can keep track of how many games someone has played. You write the yes. Uh, one thing is you could check uh, for uh, how many guesses it took and you, you could, people could uh, use this as a, uh, a, a wagering vehicle, uh, uh, whether you, you or uh, beat somebody else. Uh, uh, that's uh, then another approach, uh, a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit may be a little trickier, but uh, you might uh, uh, keep track of the time and uh, tell people how long it took them to, in real time, to uh, uh, get to the answer. Uh, but yes, then those are sorts of things that, you know, game players, I mean, our game designers, if you see all the sort of games that are out there, they spend a lot of time uh, uh, thinking about ways to, they have games that work and then they have uh, uh, ideas or thoughts as to, you know, how um, exciting uh, those things are. And that's the sort of things that you find in programming, by the way, is often you have a thing that, quote, make it work, and then people look at it, use it, try it out, play, play with it, and uh, uh, then you say, well, gee, what, what can we do to, to, to make it uh, more exciting? And those are sort of the ways the programs can said, essentially evolve and, and uh, the programmers. Uh, and that's one of the reasons for, for writing your programs clear and, and concise, if you will, uh, because uh, often uh, after it works the first time, um, they change. And if you can make your program easy to change, but then you will have less headaches when people say, oh, gee, could you make your program do this? And that's often, uh, if you're in the programming business, uh, often the, the sort of thing you uh, you get to get into the habit of trying because uh, uh, if it's not easy to change, and often it isn't, uh, you you uh, still sometimes have to change it, but you can uh, um, sort of have a, a, a sort of less less stressful life uh, for every time you can make it uh, easier to change. And it's a, it is amazing how often a uh, Python, by the way, is is a very uh, popular language in that it makes compared to other languages, uh, it makes uh, a lot of things easier to change and to evolve. And that's often the thing that the people use uh, uh, and 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 like about Python and, and why people. Uh, I mean, there are things that people don't like about Python. Mostly that some things make. Things can some things can be done faster in another language, but that other languages can be uh, harder to to do. And so sometimes you can use Python to get things working, and then you can have a discussion as to um, you know in a, in a in a production environment, you know, is it worth it to uh, to use another language, programming language, or uh, maybe Python is still 
fast enough, and so you can continue on. Okay. Uh, any questions about this? This uh, our iteration, our our uh, uh, twenty questions program overall. Hope people had fun uh, uh, trying it out and uh, making what they could make work. Uh, certainly in the future, if you find any questions, you can certainly ask me. Okay, um, let's see. Ah, okay. Well, remember we, last week we talked about files and, and how... Uh, you know, files were a very uh, powerful concept in programming, and Python allowed you to to uh, use them and, and uh, work with them. Uh, one of the other programming or examples in the homework uh, was sort of a uh, search, a file search program. And if we just look at the solutions directory, uh, we'll just go over that. Uh, remember that's a file search, it's just a, a simple file search that scans a, uh, a text file we're talking about here, just like the files that we've put our programs in. And we loop over the file and uh, essentially look, search for a string. So in fact, if we just run it, We we say we enter the file name, and in my case, uh, I just said, "Oh, let's let's use our program name." Notice we have our uh, little square brackets, as you often find in the, the teller machines and such uh, uh, entry, where uh, it asks for something, and then in square brackets, it says, "Okay." This is what I'll do or use if just people hit enter. So in fact, uh, it says it's required. And in fact, if we enter, it just keeps telling us what's required. So if we just say file search, and then a string search, and since we're gonna search for our program, why don't we just say if, if. And so sure enough, our uh, program uh, looks through this file search file and checks to see if there, uh, if there are ifs in any of the lines. And sure enough, um, and it prints the line number it finds it in. And in fact, we could just check ourselves to see if it uh, will you show line numbers, which I find very handy sometimes. And we'll say, oh, let's see, 11. Did it work there? Oh, let's find it if there, 13. I found it if there, and so on, 17. If, 19, okay, then 30. So there we are. And of course, it uh, then loops around after it searches through, it asks us so we could use the same. Now, of course, it has the uh, our file name. And so we can easily just hit uh, enter. And it's going to ask us, uh, oh, gee, when we And sure enough, uh, it searches the same file for uh, another string. So there we are. We have a, a this is how the, the program works, uh, at least uh, in one instance. Well, how do we do it? Okay, we start out with some variables. We prename equals required. And these are the, this is how we, we keep track of what we've already answered. And we just use the word, the, we try to make our variables um, sort of memorable so that they remind us of what we're asking. Um, and then we do a loop and we use our input. And of course we put the string, our prompt and inside the, we use a formatted string with the F and we put our, in curly brackets, we put the value that we want to show up. And then, of course, if the file name is uh, returned by input is uh, empty, uh, then, of course, we stick in the previous, previous name. 
Uh, and then we check to see, well, if the file name is required, then, oh, gee, then, then we, we, we hadn't really set it up yet. So then we go, we use our continue, which goes back to the while. And then after we got the name of the file, we do similar for the search string uh, with all the same sort of things, getting to the input statement, checking for uh, empty, and then checking to see if the if it's required. If it's required, then we'll go back and, and ask again. Um, and then of course we we when we get by here, we say, okay, we're gonna save this search string as the previous search string so that when we in the loop we'll be able to um, allow the user to see what what string we've asked for uh, answered before. Then of course in our our little loop we're going to go and uh, go through the file uh, but in this case we use our try here because in case something happens uh, when we open a file uh, we want to um, essentially uh, check for errors in this case we're going to check for a specific error uh, io error which is in essence most likely the file didn't exist and in fact, if we just run this again, uh, we say, okay, our uh, file name, let's say, and oops, and I just put this in there to get us back to the something happens in the file, foo, no such file or directory. And that's where we get uh, by the fact that, uh, when we try to do the open, if the file didn't exist, it generates an exception. In fact, it generates a IO error and it stores that IO error in this, this as clause, stores it in the variable E, which just allows us to, uh, if we take a look, the uh, E variable, which has the IO error in particular, is stored stuffed with the text and the text is essentially uh, there's no such file or directory so that just gives us a uh, uh, gives us a way to easily print out and that's very helpful because often people type in um, something erroneous a, a, a typo on a file name or uh, and uh, if your program, uh, if you're a programmer that would like to show that the problem was with the user and not with the programmer, uh, putting out a succinct message of what happened is very uh, useful. If you just say, uh, well, I have a problem or I can't open it, um, often the user will say, oh, they made an error, the programmer made an error. Whereas here you can be very succinct to say exactly including the file name that they printed in or typed in and the error uh, allows him to, uh, you to show that the, um, the error was with the user, not, not, not when the, you know, I, I, I officer, I, 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 I press the brake pedal, whereas he knows no proof of that, but there is certainly a proof if you, be very uh, succinct in your error message. Okay, um, so there. Okay, let's let's talk about. Well, how do we find these? How do we find these strings in the you know inside? Uh, how do we find the if inside the the line? Well, uh, there's this, several things to do when you find in a, a Python of something you need to do. Uh, that you don't know how, like in this case, find a, a string within another string. One approach, of course, is to uh, go to your friendly uh, search engine. And I use this a lot. And I've been programming in Python and programming in languages a long time. So uh, it, it works for me and I think it could work for you. You can just do Python find uh, 
and we go here and off it's the they say hmm, a couple things uh, let's just take a look at the first one python find and then we look over here it says python string method find determines a string and string stir in occurs in string or substring. well that's sort of exactly what we want to do so what's it look like ah very much what we saw in classes where you have an object such as a string, which we read from a file, dot, and then you use one of the, the member function, find. And in fact, the string you're looking for inside. And there is, you could say, I want to start at the beginning uh, or the end. Well, you don't need to do too much here because you're going to just, in our case, we're just looking if the string if, appears any place. So we can just do. Uh, here we do uh, for the lines in fin. So this is just going to iterate through the lines of the file. Uh, we're going to keep track here, of course, the, the line number. And we're just going to use the string that was passed back each time we do the four. And we use the dot find string method. And we're just going to search for the search string that we asked for and now what does the find this stir dot find return well it returns the index it found when the indexes start in a string with a zero through one less than the length of the string and it returns a value that won't be confused with any of those possible values i.e of minus one if it didn't find it so we just check to say, well, line dot find the search string that we're looking for is greater than minus one, then ah, I found it. And then we're just going to print using our formatted <coughs> uh, string. And we're going to just put uh, uh, our line number out in this, we get in this quoted string, substitute curly brackets, the value, and we haven't looked at this before, but this says, ah, colon three says the formatting capability. So it says, ah, I want the line number, this value here, but I want it to take up three spaces at least. That way you can line things up a little better. And then we're gonna output the line. And remember in print, we're gonna use the end equals empty, empty string because we don't want to print a new line at the end as we do by default in print because the lines that come in from the file already have new lines. And so that's essentially how we can um, find a, a line within a, a string by using the find string function. Okay, so the other thing is, so this is, uh, you know, you can look on Python, look for Python, and you can see how we said, we did nothing really fancy. We just said, uh, what did we do? We just said Python, find, string, and string. Nothing real fancy, but uh, the search engines are pretty, pretty fancy pretty, pretty uh, robust and they, they can take a very succinct list of uh, uh, words and, and try to find something. They just do a pretty good job. Now, uh, that's one way of finding out something you, you were looking for. But let's say you say, oh, you sort of know find, hmm. you know, it's sort of a, a, a you know, it's a string function, uh, but I'd like to go find a little bit more and maybe I don't want to go on the web. Maybe I'm on the beach and I, I'm not connected. Well, you have the help and Python documentation. You can look in modules and let's take a look at string. And let's see, uh, string. Now this is a little tricky. Uh, because I was going, I was looking for str, but um, for some reason they they sort of lumped that in here in the string. So 
a text sequence type str is probably the, a good place to look so we, you go to string you click on that and then if you you could search for find we'll just go down we all find all sorts of cool little things if you want to uh, you want to look for uh, how many times a certain string appears in the major string uh, in our case you were just looking for a find and if we look closer here uh, let's see the somewhere here is it? um let's see i think it went too far modules s and i think if we it's pretty a string methods there we are find and that's pretty much what we found on the net but it was a little bit longer but if you wanted to find all the little details of things um if you know it's a string function and you or you just want to look around and see what sort of functions you have uh, there are strings to for there are functions of format strings there uh, uh, functions to uh, create a centered string within a, a just plain string within a certain length of a uh, certain width and there's just a whole slew of uh, ways to find uh, information about the python standard library of which the string functions are one of them. Okay. Um, any questions so far? So uh, that's our uh, search function. Uh, for example, one could say, uh, one could say, well, gee, I want to look for, uh, I, I, I want to look for um, strings that are case insensitive. I want to be able to find uh, name as name lowercase or capital nam or all capital all caps you might think about uh, as an exercise uh, how would you take this uh, function here your uh, file search and how would you uh, make it uh, search for strings that are and pronounce strings that are um, case insensitive i Look, you give it a string and it prints out all the all the types of strings that are written in case are in, included, uh, no matter what capitalization uh, is present. Okay. Any questions so far? Any questions with this? Okay. Okay, so that's the sort of uh, things we looked at, uh, a little sort of homework, if you will. Um, well, let's see, I had, let me think I was, Uh, okay, here we are. Um, let's see. Okay. 
Okay. Ah, all right. Now, um, well, we talked about uh, graphics. We've talked mostly about text, although we've done a little bit in the a turtle uh, over the class uh, to show pictures. Um, uh, we'll show a little bit, just a touch to give you a sense of what's available. Uh, don't expect to, you know, right off uh, make uh, a super fancy graphical uh, pictures, but you may find yourself uh, wanting to do that. So, uh, graphics, uh, display of the pictures, uh, menus, things like that. You see in our thing, how, see here we have, we have titles and you have uh, menus to pull down and things like that. Uh, this is uh, um, this is the sort of thing we talk about in, in, in graphics. Um, and there's certainly a number of choices in Python. Uh, TK Inter is shipped with Python. That's what I use. Um, I've been using it uh, uh, for a few years now, but mainly uh, often uh, by this class because I wanted something that if I had examples, uh, they would be uh, available right out of the box. And it is. Now there's WX Python, which is a, uh, an alternative. Uh, some people think it's better, uh, but it must be installed. Uh, you have to go and uh, look onto that and see uh, how to install it. It's beyond our class of limits, but there are other uh, graphics capabilities that are available. So TK Inter, uh, it's an interface to what's called TCL or TK. Uh, it is, uh, uh, these are, uh, T TCL and TK are, uh, available in for other languages. It's available for uh, Perl. Uh, I believe there's a Java interface, uh, so it is available outside of um, outside of Python. But in any event, it is the TK Inter is shipped with Python. It's a good example of, of graphics. Uh, you'll these things we talk about for TK Inter. Uh, you'll find in any sort of gra major graphics uh, capabilities uh, in many uh, programming languages, very similar uh, types of uh, issues and, and uh, tools. Um, so uh, another thing about graphics, it's uh, event driven. I, instead of doing a lot of if then, uh, you know, uh, while loops you'll find and uh, the structures, you'll often find that you'll set up, uh, I want this to happen uh, if this happens. And that's what we mean by event driven. You'll, you'll set up events and you'll set up what are called like handlers that will do something. Somebody presses the button or clicks the mouse, uh, you'll call a subroutine or function and it will uh, do what you, you want. Uh, object oriented, well, as we talked about it, uh, uh, it's uh, graphics is very uh, uh, heavily using uh, 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 classes to to show to make objects so that you can um, you can sort of uh, do things in uh, graphics and then you can also uh, modify that. Um, and you can you can talk about the object without having to deal with a lot of the inner innards. Let's see. Uh, here's an example, and uh, it's, it's an example that uh, you can write in front of you do, and you I, I employ you to try. Um, essentially, we'll go and uh, just say okay. Uh, here's a case where uh, we'll just go uh, recent files and we have something um, well we'll just new file thing I said don't do too often and we'll just say okay let's let's do that but first before we do anything we'll just say okay file Save as 
and we'll save it as my work. And we'll just say my window. And of course it's saying, oh, I, I, you already have it there. But yeah, we did, we were playing around. So we'll just say yes, we'll replace it with our blank sheet of paper. Now we'll say, uh, like we always do here, even though we're tempted to go window.py and And we'll say, and then import tkintr as, here's something we haven't seen too much of, and this is, we say the import tk, it's going to import the module, this access by name of all the things within, but because this is a long name and we want to use it a lot, we're going to use our Python as function, which just says as keyword. This just says we will be able to specify things as TK instead of T. Oop, and this is misspelled. And then here, and this is going to take the object, produce an object uh, that's the TK. Uh, attribute, and we're just going to save that there, and then we use it. Root dot main. main loop is a very important aspect, which just allows the uh, it's a it's a loop to your program. Off it goes in our graphics, and allows a TK to TK enter to allow you to uh, handle events easily. So we just run this and you should oh, run. Oh, save and we'll save it. And there it is. This is it doesn't do very much, but you didn't have to type very much to get it. And you can make the thing expand. So the sorts of things you see a lot in, in most programs, the ability to take up the whole screen, the ability to just go to uh, minimized. Oh, let's see, ah, here we are. And the X to close it. So that's, we have the simplest uh, graphics program I know of, um, and there you have it. And uh, so that's, that's the sort of thing. It allows you to do a lot with very little because all the stuff under the hood has been done for you. So if we just uh, look at this, uh, we can look at just a little bit. It's probably the last uh, one we look at in detail. We can just look at this example, which is available as I think I, lifted it off the, their, uh, uh, the Python uh, tutorial. So we can do recent files and I think a GR for graphics. So here's a very simple, uh, uh, the next level, uh, import TK, we've seen that. We just did it again here with the as. Uh, here we're sort of using our from, and we're saying from TK, enter, give us the access to the message box that's available. Then our program just says, uh, gets the root object. Withdraw just says that little box that over there you saw. Uh, if you don't say withdraw, it'll show up. Now we'll just say, uh, we want a, a, a little box with a, a message box with a title, hello, a message, hello world, and we're just going to show it. And then we're gonna do it again uh, with a slightly different message. So we're gonna run, and there's our hello world. 
Notice the title was hello. The message was hello world. And then the OK just says, oh, time to go, go away. So we go away and then we add the longer a message, multi-line, have a different title, new title, and still have an OK. And so there are two sort of simple message boxes. So just a little bit uh, more, uh, if we just take a look, a little bit much to look at in such a short time, but we'll show. And I think this is what we sort of taken by from I heard a tutorial. And this shows you a little bit more, a little bit much to get. So you don't have to really um, understand it too much, but you can sort of say, here's our, we're doing our import TK enter as TK. And then and this is where the object oriented starts to get in. We are going to, in this case, create a object or class called application. It's just a name we picked uh, and uh, things that, that Python and uh, TK Inter allow you to do is here, is we're saying, okay, application that we're creating is gonna be everything that the object that is available from Python frame is plus what we use. So that's what this in, in print class does. It says class is the application we're creating. And by the way, as its base, we're gonna use this thing called frame that is well known about in uh, TK Inter. It's a thing to hold stuff. And the application, and so we notice we have our int, which is our creation uh, thing, and we're going to essentially pass it a master if is available. If not, it's just going to pass it as a, a none, and it's going to handle. And by the way, this thing super, all that says is go find the thing that we called our base and call this init and pass it the master that was passed to us. And then we see the sorts of things that we do. We're gonna store our local copy of master. We're gonna call pack, which is a built-in function for frame that says, place me in a reasonable place. If you wanna specify all sorts of other attributes, you can put those as arguments for pack. And then by the way, we're gonna do some, we're gonna create some what are called widgets which are just pieces, different types of things that we create. So all it is is calling this function here, and it does two things. It creates a button, and it creates another button, and it does two things. In this case, it stores the text for the button and the command for the button explicitly in sections of the hi there that was TK. In this case, it shows you a much more slick thing. It says, okay, call TK button, the button, and it has some parameters, the text, the forward, the foreground color, in this case, the command. And what the command is, that says, call this guy, if this guy is clicked. And in this case, we're going to uh, pack and we're going to tell it, I want to go to the bottom, just like up here, we packed ourselves at the top. And notice in this hi there, we had a command say hi, and that command is just going to print out. Here's we, our setup, here's our class, we get our root. We create an instance of our class application with master essentially as the root. And then we just call main loop. So we just take a look at this. And there we are. Notice it has these two buttons, the hi there button, 
and the quit button. If we say, we click on the hello word button, it prints, it goes to the message, hi, say hi, and prints that out. If you click it again, it'll do it again, and so on. If you go to the quit button, it's going to call the command self dot master destroy. And what it is, is it's going to destroy the frame that you were part of. And click, and it goes away. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it. Uh, just a little, I guess, uh, overall, so the stiffest frames, uh, their graphics and TK have what are called widgets, which are just application or uh, classes that ob could become objects for things that you might want to do in the graphics. The frame, which holds things, the label, which holds as we saw examples of uh, labels, buttons, which you saw a couple examples that control things by clicking them, entry, which allows us to put uh, text, enter text, and you see in real life, you see all those sorts of graphical pictures where they have entry boxes. Those are probably caused, if they're in Python, you use entry or something that was built from an entry. Text allows us to hold uh, all sorts of textual things, good for building editors, for example. And scroll bars, even uh, you see here where you build things for the moving, you see scroll bars on the left to the right or the bottom, they allow you to sort of move around. Okay, and I think, and then there's an example in the, in the if you look, uh, uh, there's a, a graphics uh, uh, Hello World tool, which I won't go in because it's a little bit more. Yeah, let's see. Uh, and then there's a, uh, if you Python tutorial net, there's a, uh, a Hello World uh, more on online, an example. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, we're about, I guess we're there. We're at the end. Uh, I was going to talk a little bit about debugging, but I'll just do just a, a small snippet. Uh, often the programs are complicated and it's hard to get them right the first time or the second time, the third time. But often uh, a way to do things is uh, programs are sort of uh, moving through the program. If you put print statements in the program, they can often uh, help you uh, see where you are, and then you can make decisions. Uh, sometimes, if they're if you have too many print statements, there it's noisy, and that's a that's you. You can often uh, put uh, those print statements in uh, if clauses, and then you can it's just essentially set uh, variables to uh, turn on and off those print statements, so you can minimize the the printing so it doesn't get too noisy as far as seeing. Uh, another thing, you can break up complicated, uh, complicated uh, complex operations into pieces. That's often a good thing to do if things just turn out to be uh, too complicated. They also help the uh, uh, thing if you can print the results of the pieces. Sometimes that'll give you a, a hint as to where it's going. Using descriptive variables. Uh, variables like X, Y, Z were great in algebra where you only had a handful of variables. Uh, in uh, programming, you often have a lot of variables. So it's really good to uh, make uh, your variables uh, descriptive so you can re remember what they mean. Uh, we haven't. Uh, going on, and I don't think we'll probably have time, but uh, essentially in uh, uh, the idle uh, program that we'll be using has the capability of allowing you to do, uh, uh, to do some debugging. And debugging just allows you to, to carefully, under your control, step through your program and, and see what's going on a lot better. Uh, in just in general, uh, 
you often do the shell. You say debugger, it comes on, it, it shows you a little control. And then you can go here and say, uh, oh, I want to, um, I want to stop at uh, some part. I can say uh, set a breakpoint. Um, it shows up in this yellow. And then when I do uh, a run, as that starts out at the very beginning. And then if I say go, ah. If you click on the source, then it will show you better what's going on. Let's let's just uh, let's stop it. And now we say run. Now it says where you are, and you can say, oh, I want to step over things. And now if I just say, oh, well, I'm going to go. And let's see, I guess that's, are we there? Uh, ah, okay. So anyway, so that, that, that allows you, that shows you a little bit about the debugging capability. And you can look here and, uh, if you have you can sort of see uh, where you are uh, and you can see variables that are uh, listed here by name and their values. Uh, there. Anyway, so that's that's something you might uh, virtually any good programming environment is going to have a debugger, uh, and we have to include idle there uh, as a possibility. So you can, um, but often uh, at our level, uh, uh, writing a clean program uh, is more important than uh, trying to figure out how to do all the debugging. Because the debugging usually means that we were we were not thinking too clearly, but it is there for your uh, your use if you uh, find yourself uh, needing to find out what's going on and just looking at it and reading closely uh, hasn't borne fruit. Okay, um, here we are. Uh, questions, comments. Any questions? Now's the chance. Once, twice. All right. Well, it's been uh, uh, fun here I, for me. I hope. I hope. Uh, you got out of the class what uh, you wanted. Um, you know that you don't feel like uh, you needed to. You need to be an expert at this point. Um, if you want to do more of the programming, um, think about using the tutorial that's available in your uh, your idle. There are other other programs. There are other things around, but uh, uh, I, I think. Uh, And there's the Python tutorial, and it's uh, it's probably still uh, be um, uh, not di so difficult, but uh, time taking. But I think it's worth uh, thinking about. There are other course, there are other uh, books. Uh, there's um, let's see, 
uh, defended as learning uh, Python or learning, uh, 1500 pages worth of, uh, actually 1500 pages each in two volumes. Uh, but uh, there are other things available. If you find yourself uh, uh, looking into something and you want uh, some advice, feel free to give me an email. Any questions? Any last chance for questions? Hi, Ray. I don't have any question, but I just want to thank you. This was You're really very welcome. helpful. You're very welcome, and uh, good luck. Hopefully, uh, uh, you know, we, you learned something, and uh, uh, if you want to continue on, uh, there's lots of uh, things out there. And you have a lot just sitting in your, uh, on this uh, Python tutorial, for example. Thank you, Ray. You're very welcome. Thank you, Ray. You're very welcome. And good luck, everybody. Thank you all so much um, for, for participating in the class, sticking through. I know seven weeks can be a lot, but it seems like there was a lot, um, a lot covered also. So hopefully this was um, educational as well as fun. That was the goal anyhow. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I mean, remember, he, 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 a lot of people have gone through years of programming uh, courses. And so uh, feel like uh, that what you're looking at is a result of uh, many years of uh, development. So. Uh, we just hope that you give you a sort of uh, what your appetite, if you will, uh, with our introduction, and and mainly uh, uh, the fact that uh, you're not you haven't dealt with programming too much before uh, makes it uh, more doesn't make it impossible, but you have to uh, you'll have to spend more more time looking. Anyway, I think we're there.